What, if anything, can Tommy Boy teach us about sales? We're going to dive into that question today. I'm Amy Walker. I am a business coach and a strategist. I work with entrepreneurs and small business owners. And today we are going to react to the famous or infamous sales scene in Tommy Boy that was uh, definitely when I was in the ninth grade, the favorite go-to movie for all teenage boys. So let's see if it has in any way shaped our knowledge or understanding of sales. And if there is any wisdom to be gained in this iconic scene. Are you ready? Yeah, sorry. I'm ready. Hey, does this suit make me look fat? No, no, no. You're okay, so I actually think a lot of salespeople do this right before they get on a call. They're like, okay, it's got to happen. This has to be it. Do I look fat? <laughs> this kind of stuff happens a little bit more than maybe it ought to. So I'm definitely seeing some uh, commonalities here. Your face does. Okay, let's check you out. All right. <laughs> That's a clip, huh? Hi, are you sure? Yeah. All right, now, it's sale time. So remember, we don't take no... No shit from anyone. No. Uh, we don't take no prisoners. We don't take no for an answer. Oh, yeah. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. No. Okie dokie. No. Gotcha, thanks. Mm -mm. Terrific. Thanks for your time. Okay, so I see this happen all the time. So a couple things, I think, of course, it's Chris Farley and he's a little bit more exaggerated than most, but I do think this happens a lot where we psych ourselves out in our pre-sales warm-up, where we go through in our mind, like all the things that could go wrong or might go wrong or whatever. And then we try to like beef up our um, aggression towards, we're not gonna take no for an answer. And then we walk into the sales things and we are so quick that as soon as they give us that first objection or they give us that first no, we're just like, okay, well, thanks so much for your time. You know where to find me. You know, if anything changes, keep my number. Um, I'm happy to help you again in the future at some point in time, if that ever becomes a, an issue for you. And it's so wimpy, you guys. It's so wimpy. Let me say, maybe. Well then. I'd just like to add that the spectrometer readout on the nickel cadmium alloy mix indicates a good rich strobe and fade, decreasing into Okay, so again, making a common sales mistake, which is thinking that you're going to close the deal by over informing them. You guys, people don't buy because of the information. They buy because they know, like, and trust you. And if you are likable, you're trustworthy, you have a good relationship with them and you're giving them a fair deal, they're going to want to buy from you. But sometimes when we get that little hint of interest, we're like, oh, let me give you all the facts. Let me tell you everything that you could possibly want to know about this so that you will say yes to my deal. Incidents of where to the pressure plate. If you could just... Whoa, little fella, uh, you're not speaking my language. Mm. What my associate is trying to say is that, uh, our new brake pads are really cool. You're not even going to believe it. Like, um, let's say you're driving along the road with your family, and you're driving along, la -la -la, woo, then all of a sudden there's a truck tire in the middle of the road, and you hit the brakes. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. <laughs> now let's see what happens when you're driving with the other guy's brake pads. You're driving along, you're driving along, and all of a sudden the kids are yelling from the back seat, I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy! Not now, damn it! Truck tire! I can't stop! Help! Help! There's a cliff! And your family's screaming, Oh my God, we're burning alive! No, I can't feel my legs! It comes a meat wagon! And the medic gets out and says, oh my god. New guy's in the corner puking his guts out. <laughs> All because you want to save a couple extra pennies. <laughs> and to me, it doesn't get out. Now. Sir. <laughs> okay, so, um, first of all. It is still a funny movie all these years later. Um, but let's talk about this. So there's a couple, I know it's all exaggerated, but there are a couple of sales mistakes that are pretty common that they're showing right here. So let's back up to when Tommy Boy takes over the sales conversation here. 
he doesn't read the body language of his client. So his body language, the client is like, oh, don't touch my cars. Oh, I'm not sure what you're saying about this. And he's not picking up on those cues because he's so concerned about saying the right thing to get the yes, that he's not realizing that all of the information that you need to get the yes exists inside of the customer themselves. So instead of over informing to close the deal, we should be asking questions. We should be listening. We should be picking up on those little signs that they make in their body language and the cues that they drop in order to close the deal. I do, however, think that lighting people's personal belongings on fire, I mean, like, hey, maybe that works. You never know, <laughs> but I doubt it. Um, okay, so the other thing that they do here that I see is that when, as soon as they get a, a little smidgy of interest, you can see their faces, they're both like, they get way too excited and they jump in for the kill instead of just allowing it to build like a natural conversation that is building trust. You guys, sales is challenging, especially if you're doing this type of sales, which you're just like, you know, I mean, this is kind of old school where you're driving in, you're dropping by. Um, the newer equivalent of it now is you're prospecting on LinkedIn, you're reaching out, you're trying to establish that connection, trying to establish that relationship, and then move it into a bigger conversation. So lessons learned from Tommy Boy, mostly a cautionary tale of what not to do, but let's kind of review. Number one, make sure that you're pre- pitch warm up is actually empowering to you. So I'll do things like visualize the sale closing. Um, I will uh, study up on the client a little bit. Um, I'll pay attention to my energy. I'll sometimes like, I'll sometimes need to like get up and dance and move to get my energy level higher. And sometimes it's like, I just need to do a 10 minute meditation to kind of like calm myself down. But I try to make sure that every time before I go into a sales appointment, my head is in a really good space. And they kind of went into this with the assumption of failure and struggle from the very beginning. So go into it with the assumption of success and simplicity and that everything's gonna flow beautifully. Second tip is when somebody says no, ask more questions, keep the conversation going. In fact, if you wanna learn how to overcome sales objections, I happen to have made a couple of those videos and you're welcome to go watch. When a client shows interest, don't over inform them and don't also get so carried away that you're just jumping right into going for the deal instead of picking up on all those nuances, the body language, the change in tone, the little shifts that your client makes in order to tell you exactly where they're at. Um, and you know, probably don't light things on fire. I, I don't know, the jury's still out. Do you think lighting things on fire is an effective business strategy or not? I'm going with Probably not. So thank you guys so much for watching this today. Would love to hear from you in the comments. First of all, what is your favorite business scene in a movie or TV show? Cause I would love to break it down and see what our takeaways and our lessons we can learn there. And secondly, if you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe, like, and go binge some other content because we are dropping a lot of knowledge for you to help you be able to be more successful in finding and closing your dream clients. And if you're looking for a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, make sure that you head over to the CEO spot. It's our private Facebook group and a place where you can connect with other like-minded entrepreneurs. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.